All right, I think we are gonna start uh, shortly. Um, um, and let me just uh, repeat what I said for the people who just joined. Um, we're gonna uh, have a short presentation of the fellowship program from uh, Matt Pruitt, the president of Radical Exchange and Lawrence, who is in charge of um, uh, the fellowship uh, program setup and, uh, and then leave uh, 30 minutes for Q&A where you can ask questions uh, in the Q&A uh, chat uh, at the bottom of your screen. And you can upvote, up, upvote questions as well uh, in there or raise your hand and we will give you um, the microphone. Um, so I will now uh, give the stage to uh, Matt uh, to start this live webinar. All right, thanks so much, Fanny, and uh, thank you everyone to um, has joined us. Uh, so uh, this fellowship program is something that we've really wanted to do for for a long time. Uh, that is to to uh, focus on providing a, a, a deeper, more intimate kind of support to um, to a, you know a handful of the of the many great projects that are going on in the radical exchange community, and uh, we're really excited to be uh, to be doing this now. Um, so part of the idea behind this, this fellowship program is uh, it's really to foster a, a culture of uh, civic technology. And uh, I can say a little bit about what I mean by that. So I, I think that one of, one of the um, sort of sad consequences, if you will, of the way that the incentives are, are set up in the, in the technology world is that um, you know, a culture has arisen in tech of people using technology to, to sort of to try to capture value instead of to create public value you create sort of you know broadly shared um, uh, value um, which is ironic because this is really the this is exactly the thing that technology is is uh, capable of doing uh, best if um, if that's sort of the target that we're aiming for so you know creating this kind of culture of civic technology it's 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 more than just about you know technology for good it's it's about building projects that are motivated by this idea of uh, of creating value in the same sort of way that infrastructure does instead of just instead of just capturing it um, so one of the one of the most inspiring things to me about um, about Taiwan's uh, culture of civic technology and the and the gov zero movement in Taiwan um, is this idea of building sort of a shadow institutions for government. So what what this means essentially is you know lots of activists in 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 the gov zero movement and and elsewhere in Taiwan have um, have gotten into this idea of building um, building technology that does the sorts of things that that governments do but uh, better. And what this does is it, um, it, first of all, these kinds of things can provide like a service. They can provide a public service to, to millions of people. And they can also, the, you know, the other effect that they have is they sort of put pressure on government to do its job better. And I think this is, this is a great example of, uh, of what the civ culture of civic technology is about because uh, whichever of those outcomes results, it's a win. It's a win if the um, if the technology directly provides value to people, but it's also a win if the existence of that technology um, uh, causes other people in the society to um, to do their own jobs better or to create more value themselves, like by creating by you know causing the, the government agencies to you know inspiring them to do as well as these as entrepreneurs have done. In providing a public service, um, and so, in other words, it's not necessarily about making money. It's really just it's it's totally focused on providing value. Um, and similarly, you can see lots of projects that are inspired by this you know same kind of spirit in in other sectors like in academia. So, like I, I think one example of um, of a project in this vein in academia is the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Um, I'm not sure how many of you have, have used this, but Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy is a really remarkable project that has assembled uh, rigorous academic articles on different philosophical topics, sort of covering the, 
covering the entire field of philosophy so that, you know, and it's, it's free. So anyone can, can use it and essentially learn in depth about any philosophical topic they would like to through this tool. And so it's made, it's made, you know, the whole field of academic philosophy many, many times more accessible to people who, uh, who aren't in a university or, uh, or who wouldn't otherwise have access to, to that kind of information. So I think that's a great example. And some other great examples of this kinds of uh, work from coming from academia are um, Matthew Desmond's eviction project, which has assembled um, uh, information data across the United States about where where evictions are occurring. Um, uh, Bokar Ba has done really amazing work um, uh, making transparent uh, public information about um, uh, like disciplinary actions in the Chicago Police Department. Uh, so there's all kinds of uh, there's all kinds of of work going on in this vein in in, in academia as well. Um, similarly, I, I think that you know culture and um, and and arts and sort of non academic research when they're done well when they're done right they're performing a really similar function they're creating public value. And um, uh, these, all of these fields, I think, are necessary to uh, to advance a more coherent vision for a um, for a you know better sort of civic-minded democratic um, uh, future. So we we hope to to you know bring people from all those different fields together in um, in in this uh, in this fellowship. Uh, now, one you know one other aspect of, of what we hope to do here is, um, is to create a support system, to create an ecosystem around people doing this kind of work. So, um, uh, you know, it, it, in order to do this sort of, uh, this sort of project, um, you need support, you need mentorship, you need, um, you need a, a, a vibrant community of people around you who, who understand what you're doing. And, um, and are willing to to invest in it, whether that's whether that's financially or um, or through other kinds of support. And um, we hope that we can do everything we can to uh, to strengthen that uh, that ecosystem around this kind of um, uh, civic work. Um, so that's what we hope to see develop. Uh, we know that there are so many people in the radical exchange community who are already doing. Um, incredibly fascinating uh, aligned projects. And we're really looking forward to um, uh, getting to know some of you better um, and drawing together a, a support network to, to take these, uh, these projects and this work to the next level. So thanks. And uh, with that, I'll hand it to Lawrence. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lawrence and I'm helping on the uh, fellowship program. Um, and so in the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna cover three main things. Um, so number one, who should apply? Uh, number two, what you can expect from us. Um, and then three, uh, how you can actually uh, apply. And then um, we should leave plenty of time for, for Q and A. So, so don't worry if, um, if I don't cover a burning question you have, um, just pop it in the um, in the Q and A uh, in the Zoom function, and um, and we'll get to it. Um, but the first thing that we really want to stress um, is the who should apply, because this is quite a unique program in that um, we're not sort of a a program that's designed like a Y Combinator or an Entrepreneurs First, where it's solely for um, tech entrepreneurs, although we do want to see technologists and entrepreneurs, but we think there's a, there's a space and a gap to, um, to sort of bring together um, value aligned people from, from multiple disciplines. Um, and so it, the sort of three key values, I think that we want um, our fellows to, to hold. And, and the first is you as a potential fellow want to strengthen civic society and contribute to the creation of, of new public goods. And um, there has to be a, a desire to do that and um, not, not a desire to, as Matt said, just um, do private value capture. Um, secondly, you want to think in terms of public goods that can increase returns. 
um, or increasing returns to scale, not just individualistic, uh, decreasing um, the return. So this is a sort of um, not a world of zero sum, not a world of, um, of, uh, uh, of, of sort of shareholder led capitalism, um, but something beyond um, and something where we can think about um, social um, value uh, creation. Um, and then the third thing is you want to rethink incentives and ownership structures. Um, so you don't, just don't want to do things in the traditional way. Uh, you want to think about things like exit to community and other corporate um, or co-op forms, um, and ultimately to create more equitable outcomes. Um, and so, you know, there, there are a set of values there, which the vast majority, probably everybody in the community already hold. Um, but it's just worth stressing that you really have to have those values um, you know, uh, front and center with whatever projects you're working on um, to be a good fit for the, for the fellowship. But the key, key thing, I think that we are creating a program for uh, first and foremost, interdisciplinary thinking. Um, it's easy to say, and everybody sort of thinks that they do a little bit and technologists speak to entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs speak to technologists and artists may speak to designers, and, but there's still relatively small bubbles. And you know, it's a, it's a task um, and everybody's working to, to somehow you know, get out of their filter bubbles, but we think we've got a unique opportunity and um, to try and bring all of these different disciplines uh, together. So, you know, that is how we think that those diverse voices um, and inclusion actually leads to the sort of positive change that we want. So it's not just diversity for diversity's sake, but actually we think the sorts of uh, changes that we need to see in the world will come from that. Um, so key point to take away is that regardless of what discipline you're working in, um, we encourage you to, to apply if you hold those values. Um, and, and sort of uh, that radical exchange mission. Um, but there are sort of some broad personas that we, that we think um, will, will be good fits. And no, don't worry if you don't fit into any of these uh, in particular. Um, I'm, I'm sure there are some that will, that will fall out, but, but generally we think there are sort of um, a few. So we, we've listed activists. So, you, you, you know, um, activism is the core I think you do. I'm sure you do lots of other things, but but activism is a is a core part. We want to see artists and storytellers, and um, we want to see designers. We want to see entrepreneurs, as I've mentioned, uh, investors, and that's probably the bucket I fall into. Uh, investors that um, potentially are fed up with uh, investing in the same companies um, uh, that have the same incentives and and believe that there's a, an incentive structure that needs fixing. Policymakers. Um, researchers, whether they be academia or uh, working in nonprofits, and then technologists. Um, and uh, you'll see on the, the website um, uh, over the next few days, I'll go, go into a lot more detail into the sorts of personas that we see under each of those. But um, I think you'll see from, from those personas listed, uh, we really do want to encourage as wide as a uh, variety of possible um, to, to apply. Um, so with that, uh, I think I want to talk a little bit about um, what you can expect from us and, and why um, why this program, you know, why dedicate um, some of your time uh, to us. And um, we think we have three uh, main reasons, three main selling points. Um, the first is that you will have access to high caliber mentors and peers um, working on projects um, that are value aligned and have a positive impact. Um, so you've got the Radical Exchange team and uh, the board, but also we're um, onboarding um, world leading mentors across all of those disciplines um, to help um, in a variety of ways. Um, so we think that that sort of tight community um, and sense of belonging will sort of supercharge uh, the projects that you're working on. Uh, the second thing is we think there's an opportunity to learn um, from a diverse mix of, of people. Um, people will have a different perspective on the project you're working on, uh, people that um, might solve problems in a very different way than you do, but ultimately, you know, the development of these uh, public goods and the development of civic technology um, requires these different perspectives. And so you could sort of um, plow a lonely furrow um, uh, on your own uh, with a few people um, uh, trying to, to create this stuff, or um, you can 
uh, take advice and learn and, and look at different approaches to solving these problems uh, with a much wider community. And we think that sort of collaboration and learning environment will be really, really valuable. And then the third unique selling point, I guess, is really to increase the chances of, of materially having an impact. I mean, everybody wants um, the project that they're working on to be successful in however they measure, never sh measure uh, success, um, whether that's acquiring customers, getting investment or funding, um, having partners to work with, uh, team members, uh, finding a way to uh, be introduced to work with policymakers and regulators. And um, we think that the Radical Exchange Network and being able to tap into that um, is a is a very strong way to supercharge what you're working on um so you know those three key things again sort of working with high caliber mentors and peers that's sort of learning and collaborative um diverse environment and then you know increasing the chances of success we think that those three things um uh, is a compelling program that fellows will really be benefit from um, and in terms of what the program is because we're talking uh, in a little bit of abstraction there um it's a 10-week program where uh, we expect around eight hours or so um uh, a week um of of work um and that work isn't all um uh, synch uh, isn't all synchronous uh, maybe two hours or so will be you know some um uh networking time but a lot of that will be um will be guided learning through the mentors and through the work that we put together um and and the key the key thing is it's not rigid and structured because we think that the cohort that we put together and um, the types of um people that that um that, that become fellows um, we want to uh, tweak the content tweak the structure so as to maximize the value to, to those fellows um, as much as possible. So we're going to remain uh, flexible until until the start date. Um, but generally, it's going to be a sort of a, a hybrid of um, learning materials, uh, podcasts, videos, books, and um, essays uh, to read and to, to be familiar with. There'll be some um, time to debate and discuss those with fellows and mentors. And um, there'll be sort of a guest, um, not so much a lecture as maybe a guest provocation. Um, somebody that, that is covering a particular theme will come in and there can be a, a question and answer session and a bit of a debate. Um, and and the, key, the key themes that we're going to sort of cover off um, will be governance and democracy. Um, that's one theme. Property rights is the second um, theme. Data rights. And then the fourth one is monopoly and antitrust. And that's going to be structured sort of two weeks governance, two weeks property rights, two weeks data rights, uh, and two weeks monopoly and antitrust um, with a beginning and, a, and an end. Um, and so each of those weeks will have, as I say, eight hours of, of material to get through and learning so that at the end, there'll be a, um, not so much demo day as such, but certainly a, um, a shared uh, platform where, um, where fellows will um, show off uh, the progress they've made over the last 10 weeks. Um, so that's the, the key really that, that, that fellows um, have a project, they're working on something, they, they however have a, a reasonably well fleshed out idea, they have some work they're working on, and then over that 10 week period they can make some really um, material progress and have something to show off at the end. Um, so there's, there's plenty of detail to go into and um, probably best for a little bit of a, a Q&A. Um, but, but that's sort of the core of it in terms of what you can expect from us. Um, and so if that sounds um, in your wheelhouse, sounds like something that, that uh, you'd like to be involved with, um, we're trying to make it relatively easy to, to apply, but not, not too easy. So we're asking for um, about a thousand word essay. Um, and that essay is to explain how your project contributes to the, the radical exchange movement and, and pushes the vision forward. Um, so we're not going to be too um, prescriptive on exactly um, what the essay should in should uh, include or should exclude. We're going to give um, potential fellow fellows a lot of leeway for that, but 
you know, a thousand word essay really talking about why you're working on your project and why you think that it's uh, it's meaningful. And um, that's the core of it. And then if you could share a, a very brief personal statement as well, describing you know, why you're uh, interested in, um, uh, in, in this and what drives you individually, that'll be uh, helpful um, to help us make a decision. And then finally, you can share um, a selection of previous work if you think it's uh, material and that can be a, a link to a, a, a piece of work on GitHub or um, a portfolio or a previous um, previous project that you've worked on that, that's public. Um, anything you think um, think is, is helpful to show off and um, show off your uh, your, your um, capacity. And so um, I think with that, uh, I'll probably stop. Um, and, and ask uh, ask us to hand over to some Q and A. But I guess the key message, if I wanted uh, people to take anything away from you know the the fellowship program, what we intend to get from it is is what Matt mentioned, which is this sense of community. And um, we think that uh, we think this is really important work, and um, and we don't think there are enough environments and platforms where people can can collaborate on that on that positive work. And there's a lot of misaligned incentives. Um, going on and we want to try and help address that and that's uh, hopefully what you'll um, work on with us in the fellowship. I also want to say really just oh, ahead, real then. quick I want to say thanks uh, to our sponsors for the fellowship program uh, Ocean Protocol and Streamer. Um, we're still looking to add sponsors. Uh, we need uh, Radical Exchange Foundation needs support from the community to keep uh, to keep this work sustainable. Um, so thanks so much to them and, um, and reach out if you're interested in uh, being involved in that way. Thank you. Um, I think before we uh, actually go to the uh, Q&A where we already have a, a few questions, uh, I did want to give the, um, the stage uh, to uh, Jennifer uh, Moron um, and, uh, um, and go back a little bit on the, on the personas uh, where um, you know, like her position as a visual artist, we already had a lot of questions on how uh, creative projects might be included in the fellowship uh, program. So Jen, do you mind giving a few details? Sure, yeah, I see a few, thanks Fanny. I see a few people on um, that would probably be interested in this. So for example, you might be working on a project like Matt said, that delivers a lot to the community, um, which would be great. But in addition to that, it's also like, how do you make that sustainable? How do you, um, you know, disrupt or overcome having to maybe compete in the market that is kind of dissipating, the art market? Um, how do you build a project that can sustain itself and include others and, and gives back to the community? So I think that goes back to touching on the three points that, um, Lawrence brought up the was it what you can expect from us and the unique selling points um, in terms of oh I'm sorry not those but the who should apply and the you know the exit to community kind of program aspect um, say if you're working on a comic book and maybe that has elements in it that are of a new kind of um, democracy or relate to antitrust but it's you're trying to do it in a way that doesn't follow the tradi traditional publishing um, protocols, that process, and that's what you're trying to change. That is very um, interesting for us or for Radical Exchange. So having those two elements where it's both in the project that brings a lot, um, a lot of points related to what has been covered already, as well as how you're building it to sustain itself and designers, you maybe you're working on system designs, um, but you wanna find out how you can have your firm um, last and survive, or maybe you, how to get this out to the public um, and reach the right people. And you don't want to be compromised by just working for big corporations that don't align with your values to sustain yourself. So I think those are two aspects there. That are really important. So the content itself, but also the, um, you know, your practice. 
Thank you. And I think this will tie in in a, in a lot of questions uh, that we have already. Um, I'm actually, it's the first time I use the webinar upvote uh, Q&A, which is quite nice to have it integrated. So I'm going to go by the upvotes, um, uh, even if it's a little bit out of order. Um, just before I do that, there was a question about the exact date uh, of the fellowship program. So just to give you an update on like um, applications uh, are to be sent before uh, end of day of December 13, uh, 2020. Um, and uh, the program in itself will start uh, in uh, January, late January, uh, so January 25 uh, to April uh, 2nd, uh, so that's uh, 10 weeks. Um, that will be the first uh, cohort uh, um, like happening. Um, all right, going to the Q&A with um, um, probably back to you, Lawrence. Um, there's a question from Graven uh, who is asking if the fellowship is focused only on individuals or uh, if more people are from an organization are interested in participating, like do they apply together or separately? Together, um, please. And we thought about this a lot. Um, it doesn't have to be individuals. Um, I know the, the term fellow um, suggests one, but, but actually um, teams that are working on a, on a project are equally welcome. Uh, and in fact, for some of these um, particular personas, um, teams might be preferable. Um, so for, we, we had a discussion around um, policymakers. If there's any policymakers here. Um, if we could have uh, both sides of the argument uh, apply together, um, that'd be great. And um, so, uh, uh, we're looking for sort of teams just as much as individuals uh, and just as one single application, please. Just make sure you list all the um, individuals that will take part in the program uh, on the application. Thank you. Uh, and I think there are uh, two more questions about um, like similar uh, questions about who can apply and with what project. Um, so do they need like to have a project idea that is uh, ready? Or what if uh, there are multiple ideas? So I think it's also, if I can rephrase, it's like, um, do they need to have what um, state of the project should the team or the individual who applies uh, be in? Yeah, it's, uh, um, it's a good question and, and one we've thought about a lot. And, and I think the, the easiest way to answer it is the sort of the 10 week final, um, demo day for want of a better or better word what we really want at that uh, demo day is um something meaningful that that, that the, the community can can use or add some value um so uh, in the case of um in the case of uh, um, let's say a, an entrepreneur that could be a you know minimum viable product that that that, uh, that they could release on GitHub and could be used. Um, in the case of an investor, that may be um, an investment memo or strategy or something. Um, so it's not so much how well developed the, 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 the project already is, um, it's a case of how much can get done in, in those 10 weeks. And um, if it's sort of a, a, side, a side project and you've got a really, really you're running your uh, HSBC, um, right now, then the chances of you making a lot of progress in your idea is, is quite quite slim. Whereas if this is, you know, your core um, thing that you're working on a daily basis, you're, you're likely to make a lot of process over the 10 weeks. So we're not going to have a hard and fast rule on how well developed it is, rather sort of trust the fellows to apply to, to think, can we get something um, done of value in that 10 week period? Um, so it's not not a, a single simple answer, but um, uh, we, we trust the applicants to to make a, the judgment a little bit for themselves on that. Okay, and uh, and just to finish on this uh, type of a, a question, like there's a question: uh, Do you expect fellows uh, to team up or work on their own projects? What is the plan for connections and and projects? That's a really good question, actually. Um, I suppose something like Entrepreneurs First is designed to bring people together. That's the that's the design of it, right? You bring um, you bring people together to start a startup uh, and a traditional, say, accelerator program. Uh, you come as a team and you have other teams, and there's uh, a little bit of interaction, but it's sort of friendly competition. And um, I think I think ours is, is something in the middle, and 
frankly put, it's the the objective is to create something meaningful for the community that creates social value at the end. And if it turns out that there are two projects that are really similar and they would uh, benefit or they're, they're getting on really well and there's lots of collaboration, of course, collaborating and even partnering, uh, if it adds more value, we would encourage that. Um, if the, 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 the project um, uh, just wants to sort of, you know, work on their own but sort of take advice from the other fellows we encourage that as well so the answer is a little bit of both there's no there's no plan to get all the fellows and partner them up there's equally no no plan to make sure that everybody's um everybody's separate so it's kind of an uh, ecosystem networked approach again no single answer but hopefully that gives some flavor of at least um what we're aiming for um, I'm going off a little bit of the order of the upvotes, but um, I think this is related, like, um, it is also like about the scope of the project. Isabella is asking if uh, the project can be focused on the community level or does it have to be at the global level? Um, and she mentioned that her project is to create a special development zone focused on refugees in Brazil. Uh, I think really, um, it's wherever you think with your capacity um, you can have the impact. And so, of course, if you work, uh, I don't think we, we will, it's part of the eligibility criteria, um, we will make any distinction between the, the scope. Um, it's really about um, if you think that you're able to deliver on it. Now, in that particular example, that's, that's a great thing that, uh, that and would certainly be um, high on a list of, of things that we would want to look at. Um, when we're um, when we're looking for potential fellows, so in your specific case, um, that's a great uh, example of something we would want to look into. Um, and as that relates to like a general rule, again, both. Um, it could be really, really local, um, but it can also be you know you work for the OECD and you're looking for some sort of you know global standard that would equally be be valuable. So um, I feel like in all of my answers, I'm saying the answer is somewhere in the middle, but. Uh, it is on this particular occasion as well. Well, I also don't want to put you, Lawrence, under the fire, like and Matt and Jen, like feel free to uh, also yeah. jump in if, uh, if there's anything like this is also the teamwork. So, um, yeah. Um, all right, so I think one, uh, there's uh, one last question on, uh, on this like team versus individual um, from Orlando. Um, like, so he's asking like, so he has, if he has an idea for a product that involves teaming up with engineers, him being a designer, can he still apply with that idea and hope for collaboration mentorship from specialists in the area or other fellows uh, selected? Uh, I, I, I would like to, I, I have a, this isn't one that's in the middle, so I'd like to at least try and answer that. I think um, it would be good if you could come with uh, the, the sort of capacity to deliver on the on the objective um, without uh, relying on on support from the radical exchange community. Now, of course, we would want to provide support in in the, in the missing areas, but but I think in terms of um, as we as we select fellows, I think we will probably um, prioritise those that that come with uh, the the capacity to deliver on on the objective. Um, uh, as they have it. We hope that we can augment that, but we can't, um, I don't think we would want to provide that exact capacity. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, so there's two questions related to, um, um, about knowing if, um, if um, this is uh, some sort of first introduction to the radical exchange community or uh, do the applicants have to have been involved already and familiar with all the radical exchange ideas? Uh, maybe Matt, that's... Uh, uh... Sure. Yeah, I think that it's absolutely fine for this to be a first intro to the radical exchange community. Um, I would say that um, you know, go, go ahead and, and, and apply and, you know, familiarize yourself with, uh, with who we are and what we've been doing to make sure that, um, that it's fit. But um, uh, assuming that it is, uh, would love to have you. Thanks.
Um, and tick, tick, tick. Uh, all right, I'm gonna ask a question from Carla. Hi, Carla. Uh, good to see you. Uh, it's a question for Jen, uh, mostly like, is there a preferred uh, medium uh, artist should be working on for the program? No, no specific medium. See, straight to the point, Lauren. Yeah. Learn from Jen. <laughs> Just straight answer. Got it. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, going back to the most uh, avoided one, um, is it available for research work on ideas that resonate with those in the book, but are quite different? And would there be any platform uh, to publish? Hmm. Matt, Jennifer, what do you think? Um, it depends on what quite different means. Um, I wonder if Amit could elaborate. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's fine. Um, yeah. yeah, it does. It you know there's a there's a whole a whole range of ideas that are you know r resonate with the general kind of goals and general sort of vision for um, economy and and society and politics that radical exchange is. Um, is, is developing um, and um, yeah it doesn't have to be it's certainly the like the ideas that that you are working on certainly do not have to be you know squarely within the um, uh, radical markets book or anything like that I mean you know, the stuff that we're working on um, is, is 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 well beyond that and outside of that too so um, so yeah it doesn't need to be so I think it ties into a question from Raymond uh, with asking if uh, it's possible to have an office hour with the team to talk about an idea prior to submission to make sure that this is um, applicable. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll get something in the, in the diary over the next, um, next few weeks where we can, where we can do that. Um, we'll, we'll think about the best logistics of how to make that happen, but, um, but yes, um, we'll, we'll, um, we'll help with that. I think another uh, way, and we've already had uh, have, have had some questions, uh, is to email uh, fellowship at radicalexchange.org uh, uh, because then um, then we can plan uh, you know a call and and something specific uh, to you without having everybody come to an office hour. But that's also something to consider uh, as well. Um, is there a cost to the program um, for fellows? No. So that's the good news. We okay. hope to be able to provide um, provide books and maybe uh, if we can find, depending on where people are, beer or coffee or something. So in fact, you'll be you'll be getting stuff um, rather than giving us stuff. Um, that's actually like going back to the um, like pretty much like like. To the roots of the um, uh, the goal of the of the fellowship program, uh, Emir is asking like, can you define uh, what public good uh, actually like means exactly? Um, he says he's involved in a project concerning digitalization of cultural assets of a, of a, of one country, and does that count as public good or do you expect global impact? I would say that that definitely counts as a public good. So, I mean, the, you know, the sort of the traditional economics -y definition of public good is, you know, goods that are non excludable and non rivalrous. So anything that is sort of, you know, open to benefit the, um, to, you know, to benefit a, a broad community doesn't necessarily have to be the entire planet earth, although that's great if it is, but if it's a whole country, that's, that's, that's great too. Um, and um, uh, and yeah, I mean, just the you know the idea is is you know building building things that are benefiting people without sort of putting a fence around them. Um, anything in that vein is you know close enough to what I would call a, a public good, and um, uh, that sounds that sounds like a cool project. And I think this ties into Lady's question, uh, who uh, is asking like if uh, we would consider uh, research around the stable currency already in development valid mm. for the fellowship program. Um, I'll jump in just because I, I, a bit of um, I suppose experience in that particular area. Um, I, th I think I think so. Um, I think you know. Um, 
there's a lot of fundamental research that is required um, for anything that looks like um, a stable currency. Um, and so I think if, if there's sort of a game theory, there's an economics, there's a, um, a, a social, um, social dimension to, to some of this research, I think so. I think the key thing is, as we um, assess it, will probably be on what progress can be made in that in that 10 week period. If it's something like a, uh, a white paper that leads to something, um, I think it's a, it's a good candidate. Um, but keeping in mind, again, those core values that we outlined, because, you know, the stable currency is the same as any other uh, product, as long as it adheres to those those core um, values around providing social good, not just um, private good, then I think it's a candidate. And actually, on the, on um, Martin is uh, um, talking about climate mitigation. Um, that it 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 isn't a key subject to radical exchange, but there are common elements shared uh, between his view of climate mitigation and radical exchange. Um, so he's presenting a project on climate relevant to the fellowship. I I, I would say definitely yes. A big big bold yes. <laughs> Yes. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so there's, um, I think we, we went through all the um, typed questions. Uh, I do want uh, to give the opportunity to attendees to raise their hand if they want to ask something um, live, uh, because that's also um, an option. All right, so Mary, you're allowed to talk. Hi everyone, thank you. I was actually typing, uh, but I'm happy to. <laughs> Easier. To, uh, to talk. Um, I'm trying to get a feel of what the experience would feel like. It, it, all, it all sounds great, you know, I was taking note and it, it all sounds wonderful, but as, as you know, for um, the kind of candidates that you're looking for, uh, time is, is of the essence, and so um, you know they need they might they might be need and be able to to do and share things um, different things at, at at different times. And so as I was listening to you, um, I was getting the idea that the program would be um, kind of focused on talking, discussing, perhaps even um, academic. And I'm I'm wondering if that that is the feel of um, of the program. Thank you. Um... Thank you, Mary. I, I'll, I'll, I'll dive um, straight in. Um, so the way it's been constructed is, is eight hours a week. Um, and that's, uh, uh, I think the, the reason why we've concluded that number is that we feel that's doable for someone in a, in a full-time, reasonably high pressure job, you know, a few hours in the evening or a, a bit on the weekend, potentially. Um, the intention is that it is as asynchronous as possible whilst delivering value. So the key problem with any anything where we want, you know, extremely um, busy and, and high caliber um, uh, fellows will be uh, their time commitment, you know, Wednesday at two or Friday at, at one and, and syncing out. We know that's going to be really, really hard. Um, so we want to make sure that the 10 weeks are planned a long time in advance. Everybody knows what, what will happen on what days and um, everything can be um, uh, yeah, recorded uh, for posterity, whether it's the lecture. Um, but we, we want people to go away and do things on their own time. But we also want to make sure that there is uh, a good structured amount of time, whether that's two or three hours a week, um, where people get together to discuss, because we think that is how people are going to really derive value from the program. Um, so, you know, if, if we can get people to commit to, to two hours, um, every week at a certain time, we think that they'll get more value. So it, to answer your question, it's going to be very asynchronous. And um, so if you're very busy and you've got lots on, I think that's okay. Um, but we, there will be a little bit of time every week that we'll need to carve out for the networking component. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? I hope so. Uh, yeah, I'm still, um, y yes, it does. So it is, I, I was, it, the, it doesn't so the the time commitment. I was also wondering if the the focus was on um, actually doing you know on the project or collaborating with people on something versus kind of reflecting and discussing and talking and and learning. But I think oh, I you, you answered that too. Or maybe you want to 
Uh, the, the do, I'll be, be quick. The do part is sure that there, there is learning and there's work and there's maybe hopefully some philosophizing and thinking, but actually the do is the critical component here. That's why at the end of the 10 weeks, there is going to be a deadline to create something and launch something. So I think that's an important part. We want something to be created from this. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, I think uh, Blaine uh, is also. Oops, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess this is a little bit of an unstructured question. I just, I have an idea that I think is, is not quite a fit. Um, it, 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 you know, the, the values and kind of what I'm driving at, are feel like a perfect fit, but like the state of my network or team, or I suppose is not quite a fit. Um, I'm just trying to navigate, you know, should I apply in that situation or probably, probably I should just email fellowship at radical exchange, as you mentioned, and maybe give a little more detail and explore more before I apply. What do you think? I think that, um, if anybody else is in that same position, which I'm sure there are many, um, yeah, let, let's let email that and then we'll, we'll have a bit of a discussion. Um, I think just to give guidance, uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be like this. So it'd be a question of scoping, probably, like scoping down the pro project to some extent so that, you know, something meaningful can be created in those 10 weeks, but we can progress it so that maybe we can, you know, get other, you know, hire people or get other people involved in, in the project somehow. Um, so yeah, definitely email fellowship. Um, but, but I think as long as we do scoping, right, um, it could okay. be a good fit. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, and I think I uh, just wanted to reflect on something you said, Blaine, is, uh, is that, uh, I mean, you don't need to have a full team or like a, a huge network to, uh, to apply. I think this is really uh, one benefit of uh, the fellowship program is to increase the network with your fellow fellows um, and, uh, and with uh, people connected to the foundation. I think this is really somewhere, something we want to have as a, as a benefit for fellows. Okay, awesome. Thank you. No problem. Um, and we have a written question from um, uh, Magenta. Uh, and the question is, um, do the projects need to tackle each of the four topics you mentioned? Um, and sorry, do projects need to tackle each of the four topics you mentioned? And would there be trainings throughout the fellowship? Or is that more about resourcing us to achieve our goals and projects together? The latter, or maybe I'll be very short, uh, is about resourcing. So it would be good if you were targeting um, or you, you fell within one of those buckets. Um, and and that, that, would be, that would be helpful, um, just in terms of uh, getting value from the conversations and the learning structure. Um, but I do think that, um, that it is about um, gu guiding your existing projects rather than trying to fit into one of ours. Great, thank you. Um, and I think, and Thomas, uh, actually another question. Um, uh, if, <clears throat> Lawrence, you can give uh, more examples of deliverables that might be presented on demo days because it's, it's a little hard to imagine this for the non-tech and non-art uh, disciplines. So an example outside of art and tech. I'm open to um, uh, other people jumping in. I'll give a research one um, or policymaker. Um, so uh, a, a policy memo on a particular area, you might be working um, at a, a, a state, federal um, or supranational organization tasked with looking into competition policy uh, or something. So a 10, 10 week is a good time to do interview, do primary research, do secondary research and get a policy memo and some recommendations. That could be possible for policy. And um, from a research perspective, similar model, but instead it's not a policy memo. It could be a, a research report to publish. Um, so that they would be sort of the policymaker researcher. Um, investor, um, I guess I could speak to as well. If you're an investor, angel investor, you work for a fund. Um, it would be about uh, thinking through the alternatives to the way that you may be doing business today or the sorts of deals that you're looking at, the sort of things you want to invest in and learning about the alternatives and learning about the legal side of the, the alternatives. Um, 
and hopefully at the end coming up with an investment strategy or a thesis that you could publish um, externally that would then help guide your, your future investing. They're sort of policymaker, researcher and investor. Um, are there any others, uh, Matt or Jen, that maybe we could speak to? I don't know, what would an activist out, outcome maybe be? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's open ended, you know, so I mean, any sort of presentation of, of the, of the, of, of your work, or of you taking your work to the, you know, the, the next step forward would, would, would work. So, um, I mean, with a, with a activist project, I could imagine that it, you know, it would be a, a presentation of, of the network that you've been able to put together over the past 10 weeks, or a presentation of the, you know, the events that you've, uh, put on or you know what they've accomplished or um, you know and in the context of a um, of a technology project or a, or, a, or a business it could be you know more more like a conventional um, uh, demo presentation yeah we're um, presenting like a diagram of the model say if it's a business model design or the plan that you executed just something that you can present in a way like if you had to get up on a, in front of a small group of people and explain that in a certain amount of time. One thing that I want to mention is that uh, Lawrence has a blog post ready uh, with the different personas and, and digging a little bit more into each of these personas. And these are like examples we, we can add uh, to, uh, to that to make it uh, uh, clearer uh, as well. Um, question from and, Ben. Oops, sorry, go ahead. Just one, I just wanted to say, you know, that, you know, so everyone who's thinking, do, you know, does it, is my project a fit? Do I fit? I, I would say, don't, don't think of this too much in terms of box checking, like, you know, which box do I fit into? Do, does my project, you know, hit all these four of these areas? Don't, don't, that's not the way to look at it. I mean, these are sort of, these are impressionistic um, um, ideas that are meant to, uh, to signal the the scope and the goals of the uh, of the fellowship, um, they're not uh, rigid criteria. Uh, we're not looking at them that way, and you know you shouldn't either. Sorry, I'm speaking, um, but I'm muted. <laughs> yeah. um, one question from Ben is uh, is about like um, like I would he would love to learn more about the ideas and projects from the foundation in order to inspire ideas uh, for projects he might work on for the fellowship, and asking what the best way uh, to get more familiar with radical exchange is beyond the book. Uh, maybe Matt or Jen, if you uh, want to give some pointers. The best way to get familiar with radical exchange beyond the book, I would say, um, uh, I mean, actually, one great way to do that is to uh, watch the content from our our conferences. So on, on the website, there's a there's a page with a bunch of videos of the presentations from our, from our last conference. That'll give you a good sense of the sort of topics and um, you know intellectual areas that the community is exploring. Um, you could also read uh, read our blog. Um, where you know we there's some some development of of the ideas in in the book um and um yeah i mean those are those are probably the places to um to begin but you know the the book is is uh merely a merely a starting place for understanding the way that we're looking to uh reimagine institutions and build institutions that create better incentives so um um, yeah. I added also, uh, Ben, in your response, uh, like on the Q&A, like the links to the concept page, I defined the concept on our website, the conferences that have the link to the uh, replays and the blog. Um, so good uh, three pages to, uh, to start with. There's also, um, um, yeah, well, I guess one other, there's a couple other documents that you might look at to get a sense of, um, of what we're, you know what we're about. Uh, one of which is is the the document that we put together on um, urban policy um, called the Handbook for uh, Radical Local Democracy. Um, 
And the other one is uh, a, um, a, a working paper that we did on data policy um, that we call the Data Freedom Act. And so th those are actually, I mean, those th that's, it's a lot to read, but you know, if you want to sort of dive in further, those are good, um, uh, good ways to get a feel for what we, um, you know, the, the kinds of, of, of areas that we're working in. I also added the two uh, the two links. Um, I'm trying. Yep. Um, and there. Anything else, Jen, that you wanted to add? Um, no. I mean, it's it's it can be pretty diverse. So best if you're really not sure and you're worried about spending too much time that you don't have, just reach out, email us, and we can have a you know that office hour call to see if it's. It's the right point for you if it's the right type of project but like i'll just reiterate what matt said the the book is just a starting point it doesn't have to fit into exactly those categories all right i posted all the links uh, and the email um and uh we have one minute left for the last question which is how many fellows will be accepted I wish we could answer this with a single number, but we uh, we we can't. Um, the reason is because uh, we're optimizing for diversity and, and different perspectives. Uh, so, uh, in in order to to optimize for that, we can't. We don't want a fixed number, and um, we just want to make sure that the program is as diverse and balanced as possible. So, um, uh, there's no there's no hard and fast number, and um, that also means that um, you know uh, we, we'll hopefully be means that uh, means that everybody that um, that we can accommodate and um, we can accommodate. Great. Uh, well, I think uh, if there's no more urgent question, uh, Leon, if you can put the, the, the slide just to remind everybody of the uh, contact, which is fellowship at radicalexchange.org. Uh, and the main uh, date to remember uh, right now is the application deadline, which is December 13. Uh, but thank you everybody for um, you know showing so much interest uh, in the fellowship program. We're happy to see that many people excited about it because we're also very excited uh, about starting it. And uh, thank you, Lawrence, for being on the grill for like half an hour and on fire for the questions and, uh, and if you've got any que if you're not sure you've got any questions um rather than just uh ignore it just ping 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 us over and we'll, we'll get back to you uh or on the side of reaching out rather than oh you muted yourself but yeah we got <laughs> so uh all right well this is uh the conclusion of our uh session and again like don't be shy uh, reach out and uh, and we're really looking forward to uh, uh, to see all your applications and your questions. Uh, thank you again. Have a good afternoon, evening, morning. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.